Hello, this is Fluffy the Destroyer, and welcome to my channel. Alright, we're gonna talk about the Skinner Box effect. But before I tell you that, I just have to explain to you what the Skinner Box is in the first place. So, let's start with the origin here. The Operand Conditioning Chamber, the Skinner Box, was created by Burus Frederick Skinner. I hope I have this right. He was a graduate student at Harvard in the 1930s. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time ago. Uh, the operand conditioning chamber is also known as the Skinner box. This is used to analyze behavior, animal behavior. What's the point in gaming? Just hold on, continue to watch, and you'll see. After I give you the brief explanation of the Skinner box, it's going to become self-explanatory. So, the Skinner box allows a study of behavior conditioning by teaching an animal to press a lever, for example, or many other actions, like a button, for example, in response to a specific stimuli, like a light or a sound signal. It could go with a reward of food as well as if the animal succeed. If the animal does not succeed, punishment might follow. For example, a heat box in, in the same aspect of a fire um, as a fruit fly may be conditioned to stay on one side of the box. If he crosses over the other side, the temperature will rise. So the fly will stay on the side, which the temperature doesn't go up, like it's like a room temperature. Even if the same side temperature goes to its lowest point, the fruit fly will never go on the heated side, since it was conditioned to not cross that line. That's how evil it can be. So, some Skinner box can be used to electrify the floor, or like more aggressive maneuvers or techniques. There's no limit in my opinion for conditioning, like anyone, you know, like even humans. Yeah, you see most games today are, are based not only on fun, which is pretty subjective if you ask me, but it's also based on Skinner's techniques. When you play a game, game devs or designers don't want you, to, well, they don't want you to play the game indefinitely. They know they can't do that. It's basically just impossible. They want you to play enough so that you get hooked just enough to buy their next tiles. Or just play longer when it's about MMO-based or game-based subscription. The story is not infinite. The exploration is not infinite as well. So you usually end up repeating the same action over and over whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah, grinding or working in other words. I mean, why would you give value to your sword that you got, or just like a suit of armor that you just got? Well, that's the thing. It may take you, what, 100 hours to get it, or like a week worth uh, to get it, so you apply value to it. That, like thus, that virtual non-existent item becomes a value to you. Developers know that, and our extinct tells us to gather or hoard everything we get. Hell, there was even a show based on people gathering items just without stopping. I can't remember the name exactly. Uh, but even if it's a problem to their health, they really don't care. They just have to gather everything. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like Diablo 3 item gathering or Torchlight 2 item hunting. It's just really insane. You can fill up your whole inventory full of items. So... Why give a virtual food pellet, in other words, your items, like, uh, well, it's all to make you push that damn button, or make you press that damn lever. In the gaming world, it may be called a variable ratio reward, like in World of Warcraft or Diablo 3. Uh, you never know, the next monster may drop that sweet legendary item that you always wanted. This is very addictive because you can't quit now. Like, maybe the next monster will kill that, that you kill will drop that insane item. The same principle kicks in with slot machines. You may win on your next round. Just push the button, bet a couple of more cash, uh, like a dollar or two, and maybe the next round will be, will be the one. Like, one of the most devious implement, implementation of this technique can be seen in ZT Online. Uh... You go. You got these treasure chests, which are like everywhere in the game. They may or may not contain items when you open them. You also need a key that you buy with real-world money as well. And even worse, the player that opens up the most amount of chests is given a special item as a reward at the end of the day. Yeah, that's pretty freaking evil if you ask me. 
I see the, this technique in other MMOs today, like in Neverwinter Online, for example. It's a free-to-play game, by the way. You kill a monster, and sometimes you'll see a chest. It's really shiny and will appear as something very special. You may not realize at first, but when you pick it up, uh, and once you see the description, that's when you realize you need a key. So you just search, and the same thing applies here. You need to pay cash to get those keys, and you'll get a reward to open up those chests. It's pretty evil, yeah. But since I haven't played a long time in Neverwinter, I, then I can't tell you if it gives a special war if you open up the most chests, but I don't think they do that. But the same principle applies here. You open up a chest by using a key, which looks very delicious and really sweet visually. Uh, but yeah, you need to pay cash to get that key. But that doesn't stop thinking that this technique is really evil, if you ask me. You think I'm kidding? Like, one woman spent an entire evening trying to open up chests chest just to get that special reward. Did she won? Nope. Not at all. Just look at the description to, to get more information on this one. But did she have a mental problem or illness? Uh, no, it's just called shaping. You start with a little reward and over time you get a bigger reward. You see this in World of Warcraft, you want that tier 10 armor, for example. Then you need 400 of a specific item, which are earned in small numbers when you kill monsters. Then you need to make that full set, so you kill other monsters to get that specific item that you need, that tier 10 armor. Then you need to upgrade that set, which is not tier 10 by the way, into something more stronger, so you'll eventually get that tier 10. It's a lot of work for that virtual non-existent good. I mean, don't you think? Really? So you start at tier 5, then you get a certain like certain item, then you get your way to tier 6, 7, 8, and then you go on and you go on and you go on. You get the point. Maybe it's not like that anymore. Uh, it's been way too long since I haven't played World of Warcraft, but you get what I'm saying. But we're not rats. I mean, we're human. We need a long-term goal to keep us going. I mean, we. how can designers or devs do this? Well... They set up those virtual pellets fast at first and gives us and gives it to us later at a at a slower pace. You may notice this in MMOs and RPGs today. It's not hard at high like it's not harder at higher levels. It's just longer. It takes a long time to level, but not necessarily harder to play. Because of this, the gratification increases as you level up at later levels. You must all notice that when you're near like the next level, you play a bit more since you're really close to that next level. You, you know when there's two, three boxes left? Uh, sometimes in some MMOs today, they got those little boxes at the um, near the bottom of the screen, and when you see like a couple of boxes left, because it's all uh, gr uh, gridded up, there's like some kind of grid on that line, and well. You know when you get that next one, like that next level, you, you get new skills and you can finally equip that new set that you just worked so hard for. You see the Skinner box effect here? I really see it clearly. It's way too clear for me. Also, the save points. That's a, The Skinner box takes effect here as well. Designers and devs puts up save points further apart. Or you just try to engage the player in a long and tedious mission. One can think of World of Warcraft's raid. They're long, they take a lot of time when you're in, and it's rare that someone gets out of the middle because you'll lose all of your progress. That's another way to keep you going inside the game. Same goes with level length. At first, like the levels are short, and since you don't have enough, you play more since you're enjoying your time. As you progress, the levels are going to be longer. The need will get bigger over time. The levels could be long at first, but the Skinner box will take its full effect, as if you would if it was first, like short at first and longer in the end. Another, I'm uh, like gonna fuck your ass while I'm gonna beg you for more. Yeah, well, it's, let me rephrase that. Another, I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck your ass while you'll beg for more technique. And this is the Skinner technique, of course. I'm talking about at, at this point. I don't see it as a good side is to make the player come back. Some games like Farmville, Ultima Online, or Animal Crossing, there's other games as well, but these are just in my mind right now, they do it fantastically. They make the game progress without you being in it. 
If you don't log in, your crops will wither or rot, your castle will start to decay, or your virtual house will get infested. So you have to log in. You have to play from time to time. You got no choice. Or it's going to become a lot more work, so you're forced to go inside. It's like indirect like it's like indirectly indirectly telling you to go inside the game some other skinner technique that are used while well, the skinner box techniques are used in a very like like in a very evil way like the achievement this is the most annoying most evil most dickish move from a developer or a designer can think of if you click at this monster a million times you'll get an awesome reward a stupid pop up box that will congratulate you you see this in almost all games today. Uh, some may reward you with virtual cash, but others will give you a stupid congratulation message. No new content, no new element, just a pointless task to give you over and over and over. Just like a shitty, stupid rat in, in a box. I mean, a gamer, eh? of course. Uh, I even see this kind of technique to congratulate someone when they did something really... Like, you walked? Yay! Congratulations, really? We tell that to babies, you know. But why would you do this? Like a lot of devs would tell you, uh, we're not forcing gamers to do this. Why in the hell would you voluntarily put yourself in a laboratory or in a Skinner box? Well, the simple answer is that most of us are trying to fill a void. That void must have three things. Autonomy, complexity, and versus versus reward. For the autonomy, think of Farmville. You pick your quest and you complete it. Hell, any RPG has that today. Just pick your quest and complete it, and you'll get a reward. The complexity. You want that special gear? Well, you gotta work for it, and here's what you need. Then you see a long list of tasks in order to complete it. Also, every type of RPG that has crafting has that kind of system in it. There's not a lot of RPGs today that doesn't have a crafting system people asked for it well people got it and did you ever level up in wow well for the effort versus reward did you ever level up in wow or any other action rpg game uh you get a lot of insane like flashes to congratulate you uh that usually includes like a big sound as well for example when you level up you see this big flash and there's a lot of sounds congratulating you i mean you accomplished something fucking awesome you just leveled up from 1 to level 2. Yeah, it's that silly and stupid. But that little... Like, like it, it may sound silly at first, but you get a sense of accomplishment, even if it sounds, like, really little. Over time, it gets in your brain and your bone, and you get really addictive to that flash and sound, to that accomplishment that you need, someone to congratulate you because you did something awesome. Level 1 to level 2. <laughs> Do you have that sense of guilt now, since you spent three hours in Diablo 3, instead of doing homework or doing your chores? You know what? Fuck that. You get a lot of God coming from the skies invading your body and telling you, you did an awesome job by leveling up. <laughs> Fuck that chore. Of course, there are other numerous boxing, uh, Skinner box things that I didn't go into, but this is a small list, and over time, there'll be others, and that will pop up, which are even more evil. I hope you see the Skinner box now, because I see it every day in gaming and it pisses me off. Uh, you may also see it a lot more in free-to-play games, and that's the point. You don't pay the game first, but their point is to make you pay the game. One of those things nowadays is that it's to give you a reward, even if you're in and you're not doing anything. Like, really recently, uh, War Thunder is guilty of that, because you just log inside the game and what you get is... A reward just bored just for logging in once a day. Uh, recently, Arcage does that as well. You just log in the game, then you get a gift. You just have to go to your mail uh, to get that gift. It's that silly and stupid. But if you add all the other things like the achievement system, the the quest, the gratification of leveling leveling up, which is like obviously silly to me. Uh, it gets to you, and you really get addicted to that. Some people are more vulnerable to that, I would say, Skinner box technique, and others, like me, just get annoyed by it. Like, there's some, there's a lot of games I just can't play anymore because of that. It's really annoying. I get really aggressive, and it pisses me off. 
Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, subscribe, rate, and comment. See you later.